If you're a photographer and you work on digital design, that's going to be printed in the future for your client, then you might have suffered a common problem, which is your design, the printed colors, they do not look exactly the way you've created them when they are printed. Now you need that confidence when you hand over your design or your printed file to your client that the colors are exactly the way you wanted them to be. And this happens when your monitor is well calibrated and it's the colors on the monitor are precise and accurate. This is exactly why we use color calibration tools like SpiderX. So today I'm going to help you set this device up. It's pretty easy, pretty straightforward, and in the end, give you my findings and opinions about the SpiderX Pro. So let's begin. Welcome to Forest Tech. As always, we bring you tech reviews, tips, and tutorials to help you live life smarter. With me is the Spider X Pro calibration tool. Uh, you do get a Spider X Elite version as well, which is going to have a bit more features. It offers more like projection calibration, so you can opt for one of whichever suits you. I'm going to be leaving the links to both of these in the description. If you want to check out more details, you can land up on their official page. Meanwhile, I'm just going to open up the box and show you what you get inside the box. In the box, you get this data color Spider X, which has the proper sensor, a welcome card, obviously, and then. In the end you get the activation number as well that you need to basically activate your device from the website now as suggested by the data color team before you start calibrating your monitor you got to make sure that your monitor is turned on about 30 minutes before the calibration process secondly it should not be facing any source of light directly which in my case it is because my monitor is facing the camera light but when i'll be doing a calibration i'll make sure that there is no light which is facing directly towards the screen then try to get the monitor to its factory settings so there is no auto brightness or auto lightness or auto exposure going on in your monitor settings now we're going to open up the datacolor.com slash activate on your browser pick up the tool that you've bought maybe it's spider x pro or an elite version and select the os that you wish to download your software for install the software but before you launch it plug in the spider pro directly to your usb slot after that launch the software put in the activation code and you're ready to go all right let's fire up the software you get the welcome screen I hit OK and Spider X Pro. It's going to initialize the software, see all the settings you need. I'm going to be setting up this monitor, which is a relatively very old monitor. I think this was launched back in 2012. It's a ViewSonic VX2260 VM or maybe WM, something of that sort. So in the beginning, you see these settings coming straight on your screen, which says warm up, lighting conditions, display control, and spider connection. And you move on to the next page. Select the backlight, most laptops from 2016 or onwards should fall in a wide LED category. So I'm going to select uh, the standard LED option. And here you select which screen are you setting this up for. So either it's your laptop screen, which I've already done for my laptop, or it's your display monitor. Select the display manufacturer. In my case, it's a ViewSonic monitor. So you drop down and see which monitor do you want to set this up for. By default, it's a ViewSonic selected. I'm going to put in a generic PNP for now and move on next. Before doing all this calibration, my monitor was set to factory default and factory reset. My monitor does offer Calvin preset and it does offer brightness as well. So I'm gonna enable both of these options and we're gonna move on. So you've got the option to do three things. You can either do complete new full calibration, you can recalibrate your monitor or you can check your current calibration status. So I'm gonna select the full calibration option in this case. So I've got the data color connected with this and it's telling me that my monitor is capable of setting a few color temperatures. And according to that, I can set the color temperature control on the display uh, to the preset that matches the desired wide point of 6500 Kelvin. So I've set my monitor to 6500 Kelvin as suggested by the Spider X Pro calibration tool. And I'm going to hit next. You get this thing on your screen where it tells you where to place the sensor. So I'm going to be opening up this sensor. Uh, this is a thread that's going to be stretched out. So I create this. So this sensor cover is going to be balancing the sensor itself on the front of the screen. So once you have the Spider X Pro right on top of your screen, you gotta make sure that there is no gap between the screen and the Spider X Pro. If you stand by the side of it, you can actually see that there is no gap whatsoever. If it's appropriate, you can just press it a little bit on your screen, not too much, but a little bit. So it's basically directly in contact with the screen. You hit next, and it's gonna take a couple of minutes to do its magic. Let's just wait. Brightness on my monitor is set to very low and the spider itself is telling me that from 70 CDM I need to move it on to 200 CDM. So I'm going to be making it more brighter to get the proper calibration done. Once the calibration is done, you're going to hear that beep. You just need to hit finish. Take the spider calibration tool off and you're done. Hit OK. 
Save your profile with the name you prefer. So you can also make multiple profiles for your laptop, for your monitor and other displays if they are connected to your CPU or your laptop and later refer to them whenever you need. Since you've done the calibration, you want to know that how the uncalibrated monitor had the colors and now after calibration, how much difference does it make? Have a look at this. Before calibration, this is what it looked like. You can see the colors were really highly saturated, particularly the reds were looking more like pinks. But if I switch it to the calibrated display, it looks a bit more like the red. Another fine example is of this black and white portrait because in this portrait you can see that the, the cheeks or the areas below the eyes are very highly exposed. You can see it's exactly the highlights are too loud. If I switch back to a calibrated display, you can see the skin tones are falling off very evenly throughout from the eyes areas down to the cheekbone and over the neck. So now my verdict. For the first time, it takes about eight to 10 minutes to set this thing up. And later on, if you wanna recalibrate your monitor, it's gonna take about two to three minutes. You can always go down to the right bottom of your screen and select the icon and you can turn off the calibration at any point if you wish doing so and you can turn that back on again as well. So I really recommend you guys or photographers or digital design artists try calibrating your monitor with it because you'll definitely see a lot of difference um, between both of the results and you probably will be more confident when you hand over your result to your client. It's essential if you're doing color curves, you're doing color exposures, you're doing saturation. Uh, without that, it'll be really hard for you to see or to present the exact fine result to your clients. When you put your device or your display in your room, place it in a position where you are not right in front of a direct source of light. This will help you get the best of your monitor or your display, especially when you're doing color correction. So for that, you can use this device as well. Just place it right next to your monitor at any point or any place. Go to the spider icon, right click and select room light measurement. If it says current room light level moderately low, then that's fine. But if it says high, then you maybe should tilt your screen opposing to direct light. So there it is guys, the review of the Spider-X Pro. If you guys have any questions, just drop them down in the comment section. I'll try to get back to you as soon as possible. If you enjoyed the video, give me a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel for future videos. I'll be seeing you soon with another review. Till again, Forest Tech, signing out.